Welcome. Welcome to Fearless with Jason Whitlock. I am Jason Whitlock, your host. Happy Friday. We made it. It's the weekend. Awesome show planned for you today. TJ Moe, back in studio with us again. Like, have you been here all week? Miss Monday. Oh, you missed Monday? Yeah, TJ's been... You know, there were concerns that, you know, I had offed you, that I had uh, put you in the same uh, burial plot as Jimmy Hoffa and Uncle Jimmy, and I had to tell people that, no, TJ, you'll be here all week. I was fired. I didn't even know it. Yeah, yeah. so TJ Moe, hope you've had your fill of TJ Moe. We probably won't see him again for at least six months. Uh, <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, but anyway, for those of you that were concerned about TJ, four straight days, TJ Moe. Uh, there have been complaints. Where's Royce White? Where's Royce White? Royce has been on the road for like six straight weeks playing big three basketball. And, you know, he's been a little hard to get to, but uh, Royce White will be here with us today. Uh, speaking of basketball players, Jonathan Isaac, the Orlando Magic guy. Remember the only guy that would stand for the national anthem uh, during the bubble season of the NBA? He's going to join us today. I've already taped the interview, so I'll be wearing something different uh, when we show that. But uh, Jonathan has launched his own apparel brand, Unitas. He'll be here to talk about that and what he hopes to accomplish this year with the Orlando Magic, so stay tuned for all that. Uh, we're gonna have a conversation with Royce White and get you guys filled back up on your Royce White takes, and you know we're gonna go deep down some rabbit hole, a Donald Trump rabbit hole, actually. Uh, Donald Trump's been indicted uh, this week again for, what is it, third? Update me here, because I can't follow everything. I don't follow all the Trump news. He, he gets indicted so much that it's hard to, TJ, give us a base of what's, what's the latest on Donald Trump this week? So the New York State DA, I believe, brought charges against him a while back from just the state of New York. Uh, then he's got the document case in Florida. Now this is his third one coming from the, stemming from January 6th, and there is a fourth one that seems likely coming from the state of Georgia. And so he's going to be... What do you do in Georgia? Uh, it's all election-related stuff, just trying to pressure the you know, sec governor and secretary of state. And so this federal deal, is it about January 6th, or is it, is it about him, he tried to steal the election? or? So there, yeah, that's a good question. So, <clears throat> and of course, I'm not a legal expert. It seems to me they would have loved to have charged him for an insurrection, and they have no evidence of that, and so they're saying he's, he tried to defraud the government and you know, overturn different things. And, uh, one of the things was he, he sent a, uh, tried to force them to send a different slate of electors. It, it's four bogus charges, three of which are, it seems like, uh, may even be thrown out. Um, but the fourth one, you know, most people are saying this most recent indictment has very little validity. It's that the documents case uh, stemming out of Florida when it was classified document stuff that he may have been a little more trouble there. He stole documents. He attempted to steal votes in Georgia. Uh, he uh, tried to overturn the election. January 6th. And then what, what's the other? Am I missing one? There's the New York State Oh, one. New York State one, yeah. And there's uh, District Attorney Bragg. He announced 34 felony counts. Bragg's ultra political. Right. I mean, it was. No, I, I remember. I know Bragg. Yeah. A little chubby, light skinned guy. Yes, yeah. that's exactly right. Um, and so it's falsifying business records. That's right. I mean, this guy's the biggest criminal in politics since who knows? I mean, no, there's no way he'd be only, leading the Republican polling at this point. Yeah, he's all that, he's right? got to be the Tony Soprano of politics. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I, that's why we can always turn to Royce. Royce. Uh, he can help us understand all of this. Uh, Royce White, uh, what city are you in? And uh, welcome back to Fearless. Thanks for having me back, man. It's always, always a pleasure. I'm in uh, Boston, headed to New York City tomorrow. In the great city of Boston, I stayed and, and did some rehab. I pulled my groin in the game this past weekend, so just did some rehab here. And uh, we, got a, we got a nail biter in the big three. Seven teams tied for first place in week going into week seven it's the first time in league history so the the league is as competitive as ever and we're in first place currently but it's a seven-way tie so we got we got some work to do these next two weekends all right we look forward to that on cbs royce uh make it make sense to, what should we read into uh this latest trump indictment these federal charges 
I mean, it's just more, it's just fruit from the same poisonous tree, you know, more, more fruit from the same poisonous tree. Um, the, the rule of law in this country is dead. It's just, that's just what it is. There is no more rule of law. We have uh, open lawfare against anybody who wants to have a country, uh, Donald Trump first and foremost, and, and they're going to use the law and they're going to use conservatives' um, allegiance to the rule of law, both, uh, uh, both you know, spiritually, you could say, and, and as the narrative goes, uh, to continue to try and derail Donald Trump so they can keep a firm grip on, on, on the power in this country. Um, and it's, it's going to it's soon it's going to start to spill over to other people as well. You, me. I mean, you know, they're, they're making it illegal to say things. They're making it illegal to be things like talk about the vaccine or be Christian. So, I mean, we're coming to a dark place in this country. And I thought about it after we had the conversation when I was there about Jason Aldean. Don't get me wrong. I have a lot of love and respect and admiration for the small town communities all across this country. And I think they're the only ones who could save this country, but they're not going to do it by running to the far corners of the country because this establishment is coming. They, there is no place where they will not go to uh, see their agenda through. They're, they're not going to leave rural America to their own devices. Their, their plan is to expand. That's the communist manifesto. That's the communist impulse. So, you know, Donald Trump in this, this indictment series is just a, a sign of more to come for this global establishment to, to, you know, get its tentacles as far as possible. Royce, when, the, when they first came up with his initial indictment, my first impression, or I thought it was at least a possibility, that they were trying to bait Republicans into making Trump into the nominee because they thought they could beat him. This is now the third round of indictments, and I think there's going to be a fourth. Now, I think that's totally off the table. It seems to me they're throwing everything against the wall because they're scared to death of him. And I think they're trying to bankrupt him because he's having yeah. to use all of his money that would go towards campaigning now, towards defending himself. He's already spent $40 million on defense. And he's just getting started. So it seems to me this is absolute desperation from the left. And it's, as you said, lawfare, as opposed to trying to bait Republicans into nominating a guy that they know they can beat. Yeah, and I think the signal from the noise is the the uh, the liberal mainstream media coming out and and openly talking about Donald uh, um, uh, Joe Biden's or the Democrats in general's trouble with the black male vote. I really think that's the signal from the noise in, in all of this, and it it really is a spearhead, a, a positive uh, spearhead of of the MAGA movement right now. That the black men in this country, maybe first and foremost, are saying, you know what? Enough is enough, right? I mean, we were maybe on the fence, maybe we were running behind our black women, but now things are getting out of control. And the real, the real turning point was exactly what Jason has spent a lot of time on Fearless talking about, which is the LGBTQ agenda, which is completely and utterly out of control. It's you know way over the line of, of absolute insanity at this point. So you know the desperation when you don't have any logic and when you don't have any any selling points that, that remain logical, the only thing to do is to throw everything out of the window and, and go for a Hail Mary. Uh, it, just, it just really isn't a Hail Mary for them because um, the American people are very accustomed to allowing the government to do uh, unlawful, unconstitutional, and tyrannical things. So in a normal world, in a, in a very uh, sane, logical, American constituted world, all of this would seem utterly unacceptable. But in a world for, where for 60 years, you know, we let a government kill a president and then we let a government do a shady uh, war on drugs and then we let a government, you know, go to some bogus wars in the Middle East and, and so on and so forth. Uh, it, this all seems like commonplace. No, nope. <coughs> Royce. No. Nope. Royce, nope, I'm doing something. <laughs> Tell the maid to hold on. Uh, Royce, you started out talking about using conservative people's love of rule of law against conservative people. And, and so, hey, if we can manufacture some crimes that Donald Trump did and if Republicans or conservatives uh, object, oh, oh, you really don't respect the rule of law. 
he broke these crimes and you just want to look the other way. They're using that hypocrisy. Uh, to, to, so it's an effective strategy, but, but it's, it's one I completely reject. And, and I think most conservatives will reject it because we know this is manufactured, but, 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 but I wonder how much of it is political strategy and how much of it is related to just trying to save Hunter Biden's rear end. And cause it's like, Hey, if, let Hunter off the hook. We'll let Donald off the hook. Or if you, if, if, you know, don't, press this Hunter Biden thing because you guys forced us not to press the, the, the Donald Trump stuff. Is, is Hunter Biden and just saving the president's son a part of this as well? Well, I, well for, first, I think when, when we're talking about it at that level, there are different factions working on different things on both sides of the aisle. Um, and if we go to the level of this, the intelligence community, which has different factions within it who have their allegiance to and loyalties to different power brokers, right? Like you'll have uh, Joe Biden who has his tentacles in the intelligence community from being there in DC for 40 years. You'll have a Barack Obama who has his tentacles and some of those may, you know, overlap, but some of them may not. And then you have, uh, you know, a, a attorney general or you have, uh, you know, a, a other powerful people that have been in D.C. that the Clintons still have their hands in the intelligence community. So what everybody's working isn't so clear to me. But I will say this, uh, in my honest opinion, I think that Hunter Biden, that regardless of Hunter Biden's guilt or innocence, I think the entire Hunter Biden laptop is becoming a distraction to eventually have an excuse to cut Joe Biden out as well, if need be. I mean, the whole thing is being geared up for Gavin Newsom to, to assume, the, assume the throne and assume the throne ahead of schedule because nobody in their right mind could vote for a man who can barely finish a sentence. So, again, like I said, when I was in, in Nashville, um, the narrative is about elections. And I don't care. We can talk about everything else. We can talk about culture. But I can't overemphasize the narrative around elections. The narrative around elections and the reason why the black vote is so important is because when they cheat, if they cheat, when they cheat, Everybody assumes that it's not cheating because we all think that all black people will vote for, you know, vote Democrat. So if you lose by 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 votes in a given deep blue area, everybody turns the other cheek and goes, well, yeah, of course, the Democrats won. They counted the votes late. All the all the clumps of votes come from the, the, the you know, the metropolitan areas. So, you know, when, when it comes to that. I think they're having real, real trouble squaring how they're going to justify the cheat come 2024. And it starts with the black male vote. The black male vote is going to is going to throw a real monkey wrench in the entire narrative. And that's why your ice cubes are dangerous. Your Royce Whites are dangerous. Your Jason Whitlock's are dangerous. Your Jonathan Isaacs are dangerous. Your Kyrie Irving and Kanye West are dangerous. And the black man is one of the most dangerous political figures right now in this unstable environment. Scott Adams, uh, who we did a full show on him at one point, uh, sent out an interesting tweet. It kind of goes along with, with what Royce is talking about here. He said, Trump's one indictment away from winning the black vote because here's the winning <laughs> message. The legal system is broken for you, and it's even broken for me, and I will yep. fix it. Yep. Do you have any thoughts on that? That's really good, and Scott Adams is really smart, and he's dangerous, <laughs> and that's why yeah. you know they've shadow banned him and tried to diminish him and run him out of newspapers and all that, but that, that's fascinating. I'm going to connect it to something uh, that we talked about on Wednesday, and Royce and I and Bryson talked about a week or two ago. I can't remember when, but Andrew Tate, and because and, and, Royce, we had a show on Wednesday revolving around Andrew Tate, and uh, mm -hmm. Bryson wanted to drag Donald Trump into it. I didn't want to do it at that time. I wanted to talk about Andrew Tate. But now I do think it's appropriate to talk about the Donald Trump angle on this. And, and I wonder where you stand, because again, when you talk about rule of law and allegiance to rule of law, and I'm wondering if you're suggesting that for right now, in order to save the country, 
we can't concern ourselves that much with the rule of law. We have to concern ourselves with who's on what team. And I'm wondering if that's part of what your thinking is as it relates to Andrew Tate. It's like, yeah, I know that he did these things, blah, 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 but he's a powerful influencer on our team. And in order to win the long war, we're going to have to put on the back burner or disregard his legal problems and just recognize that he's a powerful voice and influencer on the right team. Well, I, I, I'd be very careful around this. I think it's a, it's a slippery slope, and I think this is the real crisis of leadership that we face in this country, but, but also around the world, because there isn't going to be one, uh, one cookie-cutter format or, or, or template to go to to reference when making these decisions. They're going to have to be done on an individual basis and the risk versus the reward. Look, I'm the one that's always talking about moral hazard. And I think anytime we dispense with the morality completely, we run the risk of, of real moral hazard. And, and yeah, we have a lot of problems in this country and we have a lot of problems around the world, problems that have a lot of built up momentum from past moral hazard. And to, to remedy that, uh, I, I would never say, hey, no, moral ha no, no morality comes into play. We just got to go for the win. Remember, I said on the show when I was there, it's just not about winning. It's about how you win. My objection to the attack on Andrew Tate or the attacks on Donald Trump in a, in a, uh, or J Jason Whitlock or Steve Bannon or Ice Cube in a political context is that none of the people who object to these individuals really object to them on a moral basis. They don't object on a moral basis. They object on a political basis. And under that, under that condition, we certainly have to, to think about the fact that we're at war. And our leaders have to be able to distinguish how to proceed through the war with that in mind. So yeah, when I see them go after Andrew Tate, yeah, he's a scumbag. He says stuff that I completely disagree with on a moral basis. But the people who mean to take him out, they don't care about the morals themselves and they prove that on a daily basis. The question is, are the conservatives dumb enough to let the Democrats wave a moral flag and submit under cor the corruption of a moral flag? And, and that's where my that's where my worry is. I'm not going to submit to Mayor Garland waving a moral flag because I believe in Christ. You don't believe in Christ. So you don't get to deal morality to me. I mean, we can just look at the, the, the game board from the outset and go, these people don't believe in morals. They don't believe in God. They don't believe in humanity. They only believe in themselves and in, in, in so far as they can cut their life away and, and, and self-loathe until technology takes over and they can put their brain or, or their, their soul, which they don't believe in, but somehow they'll transfer their soul to some computer. They only care about humanity so far as that goes. So I'm not going to talk morality with you, Mayor Gar Merrick Garland or, or Stacey Abrams or, or AOC. I can't talk morality with you. Right. When we get through the war and we're at the campfire as conservatives and Christians, we can reconvene and get ourselves on the right accord about the morality and ethics. We need to go forward and rebuild this country. But right now we're at war with people who are completely immoral. So why would I let you have a, a, an opinion or a comment on it? TJ, I want you to jump in here. I, I want your reaction to that, because I think <clears throat> I completely agree with Royce in, in terms of I'm not going to go for the moral okie doke particularly from them and that that's been part of my position as it relates to Donald Trump is like hey man I, I'm, I don't want to debate his morality uh, you know because Joe Biden is just as or if not more immoral and Hillary Clinton Barack Obama, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And so we're just trying to choose a president who's going to institute laws and rules that serve my values and gives us the best chance of returning to some sense of sanity. But before you jump in, I just want to leave it there, and then I want you to jump in. But I want to take care of one of our great sponsors, Wynn Fisher and Naturally is Clean. Are you tired of all the cleaning products you use around the house, always smelling like nasty chemicals? Would you rather be using something that not only smelled better, but was made out of natural products that you could trust? If you would, I recommend you check out Naturally It's Clean. Their products are made with hospital-grade cleaning solutions that are going to smell great every time. For instance, Bob Vila 
always says that Naturally Is Clean has the most eco-friendly carpet stain remover on the market today, and it's Bob Vila, so you can kind of take that to the bank. I personally love Naturally It's Clean. I use it at the house, I use it here at the office, I've given it to my mother. The Essential Kit, which you know is the most popular of products, is one of their top selling items, and you can get 15% off for a limited time when you go to naturallyitsclean.com slash fearless. These products are manufactured here in the US of A. They support your conservative values, and on top of everything, they offer free two-day shipping. Please check them out today and get your Jason's Essential Starter Kit by going to naturallyitsclean.com slash fearless. That's naturallyitsclean.com slash fearless. Guys, I use this product in my home. My mother uses it. Ali Best Stucky uses it. Tiffany uses it here at the office. I can recommend this wholeheartedly, and I can tell you that Wynn Fisher, who owns the company, started the company, he shares our value. You're supporting the parallel economy. You're supporting a business that supports you and your values. Naturally, it's clean. TJ, if additional or... Yep. <clears throat> so the, I 100% agree with the idea that the left would be talking to us about morality is so absurd, you can't even take them seriously. You can go back to all the, Bill Clinton was getting pleasured underneath his desk in the Oval Office, right? The, the amount of coincidental people that have died who are connected to the Clintons is unbelievable. We were aware of Hillary Clinton and her email server and, the th and Benghazi, Obama is on tape telling, we think that uh, everybody ties Russia to Donald Trump, but we actually have uh, Barack Obama on a hot mic telling the Russian president at the time, I've got more flexibility after I get reelected. Who's actually in bed with Russia? And so the, the idea that they're going to, that they, they've got the moral high ground is absurd. And politics are a binary decision. The, there is anybody who, who votes third party, you're, you're voting for the other party. It's just the truth. So Donald Trump, as flawed as he is, and he's very flawed, you've heard me come on the show and criticize him a ton, particularly when it comes to his pride. He is willing to fight against the, the um, uh, military industrial complex, certainly the media industrial complex. All the things that we on the right have identified as major problems, they are so much more significant problems than whatever character flaws Donald Trump has. And, and I, look, I had friends, good friends of mine, that during the 2020 election, we're, we're, it's June of 2020, and it's a bunch of suburban moms telling me, I just can't get myself to vote for Donald Trump. He's just an antagonist. And I'm like, that's your problem? He said mean things to people in the media that do horrible things? It's highly likely the guy that you're either going to vote for or going to allow to win is a pedophile in Joe Biden, and you're upset because Donald Trump says mean things to a reporter who gave him a loaded question to begin with and it has printed 50 stories about how he hates his guts and that America's going to go into a dictatorship if you vote for this guy? You're gonna let Joe Biden take over? So yes, I'm with Royce. There is no such thing as the moral high ground on the left. Royce, Scott Adams has said it, you've said it on this show today, that the black male vote could really swing this election and, and really swing the momentum of this country. I, 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 I wanna, I hope you're right, but, but I'm a little skeptical that you're right because didn't, didn't Trump won like 17 of 19 bellwether states? Yeah, I think all but one. Yeah, and, and mm -hmm. And uh, Biden won just a handful of counties. And I mean, it's like a really tiny number. And somehow, you know, he got 81 million votes and he's the president. And so I'm wondering if, if the Democrats are like, yeah, let the black man, let 20% let of the black man vote go. We can fix that. If, if, again, if you can win all the bellwether states except for one, you know, when all the counties except for a handful, uh, we can work some numbers and, and make the disappearance of 15, 20% of the black male vote, we, we can make that go away as well. Uh, well, let me, let me back up a few clicks here. I wasn't talking about actually winning the election come 
the day after the election or let's say six months after the election. Now, there's no timetable on when votes will be counted in 2024. This is the whole process of the presidential election and all these elections is completely out of control from from the word go. Uh, but but what I'm talking about is the, the spirit of elections. Right. The spirit of elections is what's most important, most critical right now in this country. Um, and what they are going to have a big problem with, you know, it's it's like in sports, right? And this this is something I'll say to all my uh, fellow conservative brothers and sisters out there who have become so disenfranchised or so discontent with the election process that they throw their hand throwing their hands up and said the hell with it. Um, if we're getting cheated in a basketball game and the refs are sticking it to us, uh, only a coward throws his hands up and says, "Ah, well, we might as well pack it in." No, out of pride, out of your own pride, this is where pride can be a, a decent thing, a good thing. Out of your own pride for the work and time you've put in, out of your own pride for your own morals, out of your own pride for basic honesty, we're going to play as hard as we can and we're going to leave everybody in this gym with the, with the opinion uh, or, or we're going to make it obvious that we got cheated. Okay, that's what's going to happen if the black male vote swings. Because the black male vote, whether they want to believe it or not, is a, a, a is a leader of cultural, cultural, uh, spiritual narrative, right? I mean, this is why hip hop has been so effective. Hip hop isn't just, you know, we talk about hip hop and the effect it's had on the crime across the country and all of that's true. But the people who consume hip hop the most are white people. <laughs> right. I mean, I see more videos of of of, of millennial or, or Gen Z white girls reciting the lyrics to Little Boosie or, or Kodak Black than I see than I've ever seen in my life. Maybe it's just because the Internet allows it. But but white people are consuming hip hop, too. And this entire liberal edifice is like we're doing this on behalf of the black man who's so oppressed. Well, if the black man stands up and says we no, no longer want your representation. It leaves everybody in a real. In, in, a, in a real, you know, kind of blender on how to take that. That's why Ice Cube is so dangerous, right? That's why I'm dangerous running for office. Now, when you get your, you know, your, 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 um, your silk stocking black Republicans who go out there and try and pitch to black people, it's a little bit more difficult. But when you get some real guys from the neighborhood, like the, you know, Israel United in Christ, uh, the, you know, those brothers, when they start to say, hey, we probably not voting Democrat this time around, stuff is going to get a little tricky. And after the election is done, if they choose to cheat, if the spirit of the American people feels that they've been cheated, now we go to the next phase. And the next phase is uh, is something that's dangerous to even talk about on the air. Well, I, I'm a w w the spirit of the election. I love that point, And I want to piggyback off of it because I think what you're indicating is that. If. The, the black male vote continues to go the direction that it is, and Ice Cube inspires another person to come out of the closet, and, and no different than Kanye and Kyrie and Dave Chappelle. And all these guys that keep saying things off note are inspiring other men, to, black men, to say, you know what, I'm gonna say what I really think and not pay the repercussions. What you're really talking about is there could be a momentum here where the black man says, you know what? Screw this. I need to partner with the white and evangelical man. It doesn't matter what happened in this election. This mm -hmm. thing has gotten so far out of hand. As men, we've all been so emasculated. We're now all catering to the LGBTQ because our wives, girlfriends, sisters, mamas, whatever, want us to cater to them. And, 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 and I'll say something that, that sounds silly, but it's real. If as a black man, as a basketball loving black man, if you can't look and see, they just took Mark Jackson off the NBA finals for Doris Burke. And, and you, you can't see where, where this whole thing is headed. This Ooh. is not about you. And it, it's just another and again, I like Doris Burke. I just want to be clear. I like, the, but come on, man, the NBA Finals. Mm, come on, that, that is our league, and they just kicked Mark Jackson to the curb. Are you kidding me? Come and on. so, 
I, I think it's going to wake up. What you're talking about of 20, 25 percent, blah, blah. I think it's going to make all the other closeted black men say, you know what, screw it. They're right. This, this, we've fallen for the okie doke. It's the white evangelical man is not my enemy. It's these cucks. It's these liberals. It's these suburban white women. And it's these sellout black dudes. That, 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 that's my enemy. The, the white evangelical man, trust me, I talk to TJ all the time. He believes in the patriarchy. He believes in male leadership. He, 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 you know, he could care less who calls the NBA finals. He doesn't watch. But if you ask him for his preference, he'd rather hear Mark Jackson <laughs> than Doris Burke. Yeah. Well, well yeah, yeah. That's. <laughs> Go ahead. Let, 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 let me say this. Um, you know, the, 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 the way that the liberal establishment has set it up since, since after World War II and, and the Civil Rights Act, um, they benefited from the black man in large part just being on the bench, right? The black male who is the most cucked in beta kind of, you know, in, in a sort of a weak, uh, corrupt, manipulative way, you know, snuggles up next to the black woman who they put out on the podium every time a black man is shot and killed, like recently happened in Minneapolis by the police. So, you know, but, but by and large, the black man has been out of politics, and so by the black man being out of politics, they get to sort of proxy, uh, you know, represent him by proxy through the black woman. Well, if the black man actually stands up, the real danger is this cultural landslide where everybody actually starts to rally behind the black man. It's not just the black man's vote. It's everybody who is who is impacted and influenced by uh, by the black men who are who are prominent in society, like an ice cube. There's people who never voted in their life. But they love Ice Cube to death. They'd spend their lives to go see Ice Cube perform, right? There's people who've never, never voted in their life, but they love Kyrie Irving. They love to watch him play basketball. Uh, so th that's the real, the real danger um, here for for the establishment's, uh, you know, control over things. And the other thing I'll say is this: uh, you know, politics and culture goes in cycles. We all know that, right? Um, and, and no matter what people feel about Fred Hampton in the, in the Black Panthers, Fred was very unique within the Black Panthers. He was, a, he was different than Huey. He was different than all the other leaders of his time for one single reason, the Rainbow Coalition. And the Rainbow Coalition was an alliance between the Black Panthers, the Young Lords, and the Young Patriots, Blacks, Whites, Latinos. Now they were on the left communist Marxist side of things, but we're seeing the same emergence of things on the nationalist populist movement now. Blacks, whites, Latinos. And so, you know, if, if that movement can really start to come together, leave all the races BS aside, it's going to be a force to reckon with. And we saw that. And that's in, in a large part what I think the impulse was to kill Fred Hampton. It wasn't that he was going to be the black messiah, although he was a talented order. It was that he was he was bringing together a coalition that was mixed race, uh, and 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 they had a lot of there was a lot of juice behind that and implications for the entire country. Here's where I think Royce is seriously correct <clears throat> when you talk about the spirit of elections and such, and, and what sort of uh, say the election, the exact same thing happens. Trump wins 18 of the 19 bellwether counties. It, it, I just looked this up, actually. I wasn't even aware at the time. So the, the way they defined bellwether counties were these counties voted for the president, who eventually won, every year from 1980 to 2016. They, they didn't get a single one of those wrong. And suddenly, 18 of these 19 got one wrong all in one year. So Trump wins all of that. There's tons of evidence that, you know, with all the drop boxes and everything, that there's something fishy. But where I think Royce is seriously onto something is because black people today, the average Hollywood black man hasn't come out like Ice Cube has or like Kanye has or like either of you have and said something, there's still the narrative that if you come out for Trump, you're a racist. And so black men are oftentimes the gatekeepers for public white opinion because they don't want to be considered a racist. So if black men start coming out and say, something wrong with this, I don't know anybody that voted for Joe Biden over Donald Trump. Suddenly the white people now in Hollywood or wherever else, the Chris Pratt's who are obviously openly Christian but don't want to be overtly political, now the white people can join in too. And now you have the celebrity class, many rappers, whoever else, all coming out and saying the same thing and people start to believe 
maybe there is something to this Donald Trump thing, because even the Hollywood elites are saying it. Something's up. I, I, I'm going to say one thing, Royce, and then I want you to say whatever it is you want, and we're going to close out this segment. But, but and, and you could pick, piggyback off what I'm saying or make your final point or do both, whatever you feel like. Uh, Royce mentioned, I think, or TJ, one of you, the Hebrew Israelites. And, and I've taken some flack. I circled back to Bishop Nathaniel. Uh, you know, me and Bishop Nathaniel done exchange phone numbers. And, and I, I'm never going to back away from these guys. And, and I know they're flawed. I know they're flawed. You've heard me talk. You saw, you saw me and Bishop Nathaniel argue on this show about his racial idolatry and all this other stuff. But I have to salute him for uh, what they did at Old Block in Chicago and his ability to rally men. And when I see that kind of courage in men to go to Old Block and stand on that street and do a show of force, I see the type of men that will stand on principle and have some form of sacred honor. So I'm never going to give up on them. Never. It will not happen. And they will do things that frustrate me and, and, and are flawed and things I disagree with. But we need those men, men with that kind of courage. And it's just like, you know, Bryson is a young, you know, passionate, convicted, Knucklehead, me, you gotta, I'm never giving up on him. Because he has conviction, he has passion, and, and you know, I think he, you know, he doesn't do everything right, but no one does, I don't. And so when I see men of any type of conviction, I'm not giving up on them because those same Hebrew Israelites at some point are gonna have to deal with like, well, hold on, man, who really is standing in the way of male leadership and a type of masculinity that allows my biblical values to exist at all. And, and at some point, Bishop Nathaniel, he's going to wake up or his guys are going to wake up and go, it's not the white evangelical man. He's, he's not standing in the way of your biblical values. He doesn't care if you believe you're Jews. He, what he wants to care about is like, uh, do we have some shared values? Do we believe in God? Do we believe you, uh, our rights come from a higher power, a creator? And, and, and do you believe in freedom? Do you believe in autonomy and agency? Do you see yourself as a victim? Those are the things I care about. And those are the things I think most naturally functioning, right-minded men think about. They'll take care of themselves. They don't need the government to give them a handout. They, just, they need the government to get out of their way and make sure things are relatively fair, and they'll take care of themselves. And so, uh, you know, for those of you that have emailed and, uh, man, I can't believe you brought the Hebrew Israelites back up. Get used to it. I'm, I'm not saying that, you know, he's going to be on once a week or once a month even, but from Bishop Nathaniel to Pastor Charles Dow and uh, the straightway Israelite, I'm never giving up on them. And, and I, I got less problems with them because they don't have the racial idolatry issue. I, I like those guys, Daniel Meir, Robert Mathis, love them. Th those men have balls and will stand on things. And, and we need more of that. Royce, you got the final say, and then uh, we'll go to break and come back with Jonathan Isaac. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm right there with you. I think, number one, God-fearing people have failed this country. God-fearing people have failed uh, civilization all around the, the world. And I, I think we like to tell the story that the Satanists have have taken over, but but our lack of faith allowed it. And anybody who doesn't see it that way is playing right into Satan's trick, right into Satan's game. And I'm very slow to make any um, hardline prejudgments about people who profess to believe in God. 
you know, whether we talk about the Hebrew Israelites or, or, or the, you know, the Talmud or Islam or, you know, even a guy like Vivek, who, who, who is now, you know, talks about God, even though it's from a Hindu lens. But, you know, he still has some formulation of a metaphysical, uh, uh, you know, belief. Uh, not that I agree with it, but I'm just saying I, I'm very slow to have these hardline prejudgments against these people because I know that Christians failed this country. I think I just saw Candace saying, and you know I'm no huge fan of Candace. I think she she has potential to be a powerful force in, in the future of, of this country. Uh, and, and I agree with a lot of things she says, but I'm not a Candace super fan. I'm certainly not a, a Candace cuck like so many of these uh, uh, white conservative men. But but um, I, I heard her say it the other day when she spoke with Andrew Tate. And, and she was just like, look, how are we a Christian country and Satanists are openly mocking Christ in the streets? I mean, we can't square it. And, and what I'll say, I love the fearless audience, love them to death, you know, love the conservative movement and love the nationalist populist movement, love War Room, you know, love Alex's audience and everybody else. But let's get one thing straight. OK, the Protestants and the Catholics have their own perverted, have their own perversions of Christianity. OK, and, 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 and of belief, of faith. And we, we like to pretend like we don't because we got the juice. We got the big stick on the playground when it comes to religion, right? Whether it be Christians as a full body or more specifically Catholics and Protestants. And then we like to have this little brotherly quarrel between us. And it's all just a, a way for Satan to continue to encroach upon us. And, and so, you know, when we look at the Hebrew Israelites and and we can't find a way to open our minds and hearts to have a conversation or see an ally of a god friend person, all we're doing is laying the ball up at our own basket for Satan, in my opinion. Totally agree. Great job, Royce. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Know you're going to play well. Uh, rest that. Uh, do your rehabilitation. I was groin. groin. Yeah, I didn't want to ask. Something about that sounded weird. Telling a man to rest his groin, I, I wasn't comfortable with that, TJ, but, you know, that's you. I'll fill you, the blanks, you do man. you. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, you can email me and us, fearlessblazeshow at gmail.com. Uh, Jonathan Isaac. It's my obligation to hate discrimination, raising up your hands for freedom. Welcome back. Uh, we're going to go down to Orlando and bring in Jonathan Isaac, NBA player for the Orlando Magic and the CEO of a new company called Unitas Apparel. Jonathan, welcome to Fearless. And uh, tell us a little bit about Unitas Apparel. It's a pro-Christian clothing line. Why did you start it and what are you hoping to accomplish? Well, first off, thank you for having me, Jason. You are a you're a legend. I love your stuff. I love what you do, and I'm grateful to be here. I gotta say Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so um, Unitas for me, it started back in 2020. So I was a Nike signed athlete. Um, I got injured at the time, and I didn't re-sign with Nike. And it started because I was talking to my pastor actually. And I was telling him about, you know, the sneaker situation. And we were, I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with another company. And he said to me, you should create your own sneaker. And I'm like, OK, hold on. I don't think you understand what that means. Like, I don't know what even that looks like. He said, you should look into it. And so I did. And I uh, started to go down the road of what would it look like to make my own shoe. And then I found the right resource and we started to do it. And then it blossomed into what would it actually look like to create an entire sports and apparel company? Because the shoe was based around my values. It has a as a scripture on it. Um, Judah is my middle name. So it's a lion themed sneaker. Um, and then I was like, well, there are plenty of people, especially in today's day, um, that are yearning for something that they can spend their money with and just represent their values. Um, as you look out into our society, America as a whole, it feels like everything is running away from godly values and principles, constitutional principles and values, and what would it look like if we were able to celebrate it ourselves um, while other people don't want to celebrate it. And so that's how the concept of Unitas was born. The name of Unitas was born because the same pastor, um, he came out of prayer and he's like, you need to name it Unitas. And I'm like, I love it. I absolutely love the, the name. Um, and, and I just ran with it. And I started to, to create and to work with some other folks that I brought along. Um, and built 
this concept of a values-based alternative to everything that's out there in the world. If you understand the value and necessity and faith in Christ, um, faith in our founding principles and values, faith in family and freedom at the end of the day, then Unitas is for you. Jonathan, obviously you came to fame, uh, you know, I've been an NBA player, but you really drew attention in the bubble when you chose to stand for the national anthem. And when most of the guys were taking a knee in celebration of Black Lives Matter, what is it like being a Christian who wears his faith on, its, on his sleeve being in the NBA? Are you an outsider or are there far more closeted Christians in the NBA than what we're made aware of? There are definitely a, a handful of guys um, that I would say are, 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 are walking that walker and trying their best to honor Christ in their everyday lives. Um, I would say it's definitely a lonely road. Um, and that, I mean, that's for most Christians and most professions, be it the, the NBA, it's definitely a bit highlighted because of just the culture of, you know, being famous in professional sports. Um, so I would say it's definitely lonely. Um, but for me, especially understanding what it's like to be the only one in a lot of situations is a part of, you know, why Unitas is born, because there are so many people that feel alone in today's day because of what they believe. And if through Unitas, I can help bring these people together, um, then that's what I'm trying to do. So as you and I talked a few weeks ago, you know, off air, uh, the, the only thing that has been standing in your way really has been your health. Uh, if, if, if your knees get right, you're a tremendous player, you're, you're extremely athletic, you're long. H how confident are you that this is the year? Because I think with your brand, Unitas, it's all, it's like the Michael Jordan movie, Air. It's all dependent on how great you are on the court. That's going to elevate your brand. How comfortable are you that this is going to be the year that your, your on-court career takes off? I, I, I feel like it's destiny. I, I feel like it's meant to be with everything that I have um, gone through with the injuries and, and having the time, honestly, to take away from you know rehabbing. And have, well, I was able to write a book because I was rehabbing. I was able to work on Unitas because I was rehabbing. And it feels like everything is coming together at the right time. I'm completely healthy. This is my first summer that I've been able to work out um, on a consistent basis and I'm not rehabbing. Um, I'll be ready to go for the start of the season. I'm excited about that. And then also to your point, what, what I love about Unitas and what I love about me personally is that when it comes to faith in Christ, it's, it's bigger than basketball. And so finding my identity in something outside of the game has, has helped me with the game in the first place. But what I think is so significant about Unitas is that it's not just about stats. It's not just about who this guy is on the court. It's more about who he is as a person and what he stands for. And people can get behind that. I completely agree that having a killer season in the Orlando Magic go on to win a championship, which is what we're striving for, would take this thing to the next level and blow it off the roof. But even if that doesn't happen, I believe in this vision. I believe in the values that so many other people believe in and think that um, it's going to be a success. Have you seen the movie Air about Michael Jordan and the Air Jordan shoe? And if you have, what, what messages did you take from that? What inspiration did you take from that movie? I did see it. Um, I would say a couple. I would say one would be taking the step. You know, I think there were so many moments in, in the Nike movie where it was like on, you know, one decision or another. Do we cash in on Michael? Or do we go in a different direction when it comes to the sneaker, when it comes to all these different things? As I was watching it, I felt like I was literally walking through that same scenario because, you know, I'm developing a shoe. I'm, I'm, I'm putting kind of all my eggs in one basket with this thing because I believe in it um, and also believing in myself. I, I wouldn't have part of me wouldn't have gone on this endeavor if I didn't believe in the basketball player that I am as well. And so having that belief, having that kind of motivation behind me and also having the people around me, like Michael had his mom, um, having the right people around me, my church family, my pastor, my wife, my, my, my actual family, um, having those people pushing me has helped me to get to where I am today. And so I think just that, that, that energy that like, okay, this is the make or break, put our eggs in one basket and, and bet on it. 
So you mentioned earlier when I asked that, you know, being a devout Christian, sometimes being in that world of fame and celebrity of the NBA can be lonely. How does it how does that manifest itself in terms of all your teammates or many of your teammates are going out to socialize at clubs and maybe you're not as interested? How how does how does being a devout Christian perhaps isolate you from some of your other peers? Well, I think just on a, on a realistic level, you, you hit it on the head. You know, there, there are things that, um, you know, young guys with money like to get into. And, uh, you know, in topics, you know, we like to talk about it. And it's, it's, it's just, you know, comes with the territory. It's not about judging anybody. It's just the, re- the realistic factor of it. And I try my best to um, not entertain those places or conversations. So at times, you know, I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm a fly on the wall uh, to a degree. And so I, I love to just focus on basketball, focus on getting myself where I need to be, focus on winning. And then at the same time, I'm, I love the camaraderie. I love getting you know into it with my teammates and loving the competitive nature of it and the brotherhood nature of it. But at the end of the day, you know, we're different. So uh, Jonathan Isaac, at his highest level of a basketball player, is there anybody who has played before you or maybe that's playing now where you say, that's when these guys see me healthy for 82 games, that's who I am. You know, what's, what's funny is I, I honestly don't think I, I honestly don't think we've seen it. Um, I, I think that I am. I think that I'm the best defender in the NBA um, and I'll be able to show that when I come back. And I also believe that many people don't know me for especially when it comes to the NBA basketball, but for the the offensive upside that I do have um, that I haven't been able to truly put on display because of injuries um, and because of just my growth as an as, as a player and individual. And I think that I'll be able to showcase all of that this season and and turn heads and people will be like, you know, where, where was this at or or it's glad to you know, they'll be glad to have Jonathan Isaac back. So if there's some young kids out there watching or parents that want to get their kids some Unitas gear, uh, the clothing, the shoes, where where should we send them? You should send them to weareunitas.com and also we are Unitas Instagram, we are Unitas Twitter. Um, We're going to first start with our kind of first leisure wear drop, which is going to be, you know, hoodies, T-shirts, sweatpants, things like that. And as we move into the fall, we're going to get into our sportswear package, which is the sports bra, the leggings, the tank, the shorts. And then closer to the season, we'll un- unveil the Unitas Judah One, which is a sneaker that I'll be wearing this season. And so I just want to be clear with the audience. Unitas is spelled Unite, U-N-I-T-E, and then us, Unite Us, U-S at the end of that. Don't spell it like Johnny Unitas or the United States of America. But, or anything like, but no, Unitas. There's no, there's no E. So U N I T U S. Oh. One word, Unitas. <laughs> I'm sorry. U N I T U S. Unitas. Uh, got you. Thank you for creating. Look at me. I'm the journalist. I'm supposed to know how to write. I shouldn't have screwed that up. Uh, I Jonathan, I wish you nothing but success. This upcoming season, no one deserves it even more, uh, more than you. Uh, and good luck with the launch of Unitas and your clothing line and apparel. Uh, I'm going to hop online and buy myself some, and perhaps you'll see me wearing it here on Fearless. Uh, I want to be. I don't want you to send me or ship me anything. I want to pay for it and support myself. But uh, love what you're doing. I, I think what you're doing is important want you to have as much success so that you can uh, demonstrate to some of these other athletes that there are other ways of going about this and you can stand on that biblical faith that many of us were given in childhood that fame and fortune and celebrity kind of pull us away from uh, when, it re- when we probably needed even more when we're famous and wealthy. Uh, we, we needed more than when we're anonymous. So. Uh, thank you so much for making the time, and good luck this season, and good luck with uh, Unitas. Yes, sir. I really appreciate you, Jason. Thank you so much. All right, that's it, and that's all for us this week. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Jonathan Isaac was great. Royce White was great. And TJ Moe was here with us all week. Uh, final round of applause. Can't,
DJ, you're like fish. You spoiled after two days, but we let you stay two more. Mm -hmm. uh, play tomorrow, and uh, we'll see you next week. Came like a fighter, striking like a ladder, making all this moves for freedom. I want freedom. No negotiation, my system, no relation. We all just wanna have freedom. Sitting on a corner, never been alone. I'm breaking my back for freedom. Bless, we are living, get back. We are receiving, all receiving. We all wanna be free. We want freedom. I just want, I wanna be, I just want